Hi there, I am Black Bright and just a quickie because I'm going out in a moment, but I just wanted to talk about universal credit. Now, if it's the first time you're passing through, I do talk about a lot of different subjects. Usually um, what I talk about is to help those who don't understand certain things or who are not privy to certain information and basically where I think people have been treated unjustly I just put my little mouth my little two pence worth in now today I wanted to talk about the universal credit application process and I was asked to help a friend of mine complete to help them register because um, they have literacy problems not only um, literacy as in talking and writing but also digital literacy and computer illiteracy I should say digital illiteracy and computer illiteracy so I thought I would try and um, show them how to do it and see how it's done myself because I thought if it's difficult it'd be a good reason to do a video so that people know what to expect now, I consider myself computer literate, I consider myself digital illiterate, and I consider myself to have a certain amount of intelligence and know-how and spelling and all that kind of stuff. So I thought, well, it should be a breeze. And technically, it could be a breeze, but the um, they have um, some systems within it that make it very, very difficult if you are not clued up and that doesn't mean that you have to be stupid or that you have to be stupid not to understand it's that they change the rules in the middle of the game so what happened is is that okay you you start registering is pretty straightforward you set up your username you set up a password and I think you put in your date of birth you put in your address and I think you put in your bank details. All those things that say, oh, great, I'm registered. They now have my details. But remember, there's no going back once you've done that. Those documents, that information is there. Your bank account, your date of birth, your name. And you have a username and you have a password. Okay, so that is the first step. Then they say, do you want to make a claim? And most people, that's why they're on universal credit. So they do want to make a claim. So they ask you, do you have a passport? And do you have a driving license? Well, the person I was helping out had a passport and a driving license. They didn't say that you had to have it with you on your person. They just said, do you have one? So tick tick goes on to the next box then you've got all of these questions about whether or not you own a property whether or not you've paid council tax whether or not um well i can't even remember what there was lots of questions and you you go through the whole questions and you have to make sure that everything is um correct otherwise it prompts you that you've missed something and so forth so you do all of that and I was saying to that person look if I'm helping you they're not going to know that you are not computer literate and they're going to have certain expectations of you and you can't be coming and asking me to help you out every time you get an email or every time they ask you to do something with universal credit no, no, he says, I'm going to go for an interview and that will be fine. I'll tell them exactly. I said, OK. So the form was done. When you get to the end of the form now, to the claim form, they say you need to verify. And to verify, do you have your passport? No, they didn't say, do you have your passport? That that Because that's already locked. So then when you go to verify, they ask you for passport number and they ask you for um, the driving license details now what where it gets complicated is there is nowhere from the beginning of the application to the point where you verify that says have you just changed your address how long have you been to your 
How long have you been at your previous address? Questions like that. So because this person is going to their um, new address and they've been living somewhere else for three years and because the claim is going to take place from their new address, that's the address that they put onto the system. Now, when it comes to verifying, the verifier will say, please put in your name and your address and blah, blah, blah. Now, when you're putting in the verify thing, the the um, the driving license has to match with the address that you've been living at for the last three years, and of course that does. But the passport that was probably at the address he was. I don't know. He doesn't remember when he took the passport out, which was maybe about six or seven years ago. My point is, is that at that point, everything went smoothly. But then when it went through the verifier, because the address didn't match the one that was on the system that he's moving to, and it didn't match with, um, yes, yeah, so that's basically it. Because it didn't match, it threw it out. Now, when the first, when it threw it out, it says you've got 28 days to... Um, get your to re-verify then so I'm not quite sure how you re-verify when it doesn't give you the option especially online to put previous addresses in how do you do that so then I was thinking to myself well you you, you better call and make an appointment so then they've got a little tab that says make an appointment you complete that part up to do the appointment it doesn't give you an appointment, it tells you to call, but then it changes the um, the the, um, the time that you have to submit the verification documents from 28 days to five days. Now, why I'm saying it's it's a very um, not devious, it's it's I don't even know what word to use. But if you're not on the board, you see that you think you've got 28 days. And then when you make an appointment, they change it to tw tw to five days. That's, that's kind of very misleading. And for somebody who might have some difficulty, they might have seen the 28 days. And then if you don't produce that information within the five days, you have to do the whole application again. Well, first they said within the 28 days, you have to do the application again. And I'm thinking, well, 28 days, that's plenty of time. But five days is not that long. Especially if you're working and you have to come home from work and you have to get all your paperwork and stuff like that. It's not that long. So therefore, I thought to myself, based on that alone, now, the application process, which took two and a half hours, that's how much of my time I had to spend filling up that application, helping that individual with the application, two and a half hours. And now what they're saying is, is that if they don't have those documents within five days, you have to do the whole application again. So I really think that universal credit application and claim form thing is, it's not user friendly at all. Oh, and another thing, when you're doing the re-verify, you have to go to another website. So somebody who's not that computer literate how are they going to know how to navigate all of that? So they have to go to a completely different website, put the details that they tell you to put in. You then get another, you get a telephone, you get a, um, you get a message. Oh, that's another thing I forgot. When you've given them your mobile number, then you have to get a text message to get a code. Now, what happened is this individual had his, um, his phone was full. So it couldn't accept any messages. So then he had to delete the messages. When he deletes the messages now, by that time, the, the, um, the code has expired. So putting in the code, it says it expired. So you have to do that again. Then they're sending 
you've given them an email address, then they send you a code to the email address. So it's just like you have to be back and forth and on the ball and you have to be able to get, retrieve that information very quickly. I think you have five minutes to retrieve that information and put it onto the system. Supposing you're slow, supposing you've left your phone upstairs, you're not going to know that they're going to send you a code or you don't know where your phone is at the time. It's so annoying. Anyway, then you have to go to a different site. That's where I was getting with this. You have to go to another site, put in another username and another um, password. So you happen to remember, well, I told him to use the same password. But you have to, you know, if you don't use the same password, I think it's going to be even more difficult. But the thing is with that verify, it's not even that you're going to be using that too often. But then you have to put the password in and the username and then you have to put in all these details again. And you put in all that details, which takes about 15, 20 minutes by the time you finished. And at the end of it, it throws it out and says, we're very sorry, the address... Um, that you've provided doesn't correlate with what the passport office has and what another I think DVLA have or something like that please um, either resubmit or something like that anyway the re-verification didn't go through so you kind of go through that whole process and the time I mean when when I say two and a half hours that means three hours to, comp to, to register and put in a claim on universal credit. No wonder people are, are so frustrated with it. And the thing is, everything's got to correlate and it's not guaranteed. It's not everybody that's lived at the same address for the last bloody 10 years or whatever. Not everyone's done that. So not everybody, and if you're somebody who's renting and you've got a tenancy agreement for one year and then another year or whatever, what happens then? And you can't remember which one of the addresses you took out your driving license at. Well, you drive not your driving license because that has to be updated, but your passport out. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you. So anybody who's thinking about applying for universal credit, make sure your phone is at hand, make sure your passport is in your hand and make sure your, your bank card is in your hand and make sure your driving license is in your hand. And make sure you remember where you took those documents, what address you were at. When, But it doesn't even make any sense because people move around. So even if you did remember where you got your passport from, it's not going to be the same as where you want your claim to go. And you can't put the old address because you're claiming from a local job centre. I mean, it hasn't been well thought out at all. That's all I wanted to say. Bye-bye.